Well, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the East Room of the White House. That's right, we are launching SBA's second annual Women's Business Summit in the White House. Uh, amazing to, to fill this White House with so many incredible entrepreneurs. I see you all you, you are advocates, I see all you, and including our chairman of the, House, of the Senate Small Business Committee, Senator Cardin. You know, thank you, President Biden, for hosting us. And thank you, Mr. President, for your unwavering commitment to small businesses. In fact, there's been a historic small business boom under your leadership. And that's because, that's because from day one, President Biden has been a champion for American entrepreneurs. From the smallest of the small, initially left out of COVID relief, who reopened and thrived thanks to his American Rescue Plan, to the inventors, manufacturers, supply chain companies, and contractors seeing growth opportunities thanks to his historic investments in American infrastructure and clean energy, and to our Main Street job creators who are benefiting from legislation that lowers the cost of healthcare and prescription drugs for their workers. And he sees us, he knows women are leading the way as they continue to grow, <laughs> innovate, grow, innovate, compete, and lift up neighborhoods and communities across the nation. Which brings me to Natalie King. Natalie is the founder and CEO of Dunamis Clean Energy Partners, a multi-million dollar manufacturing company with over 135 workers throughout Southeast Michigan. That is right, it's a big accomplishment. And she is helping to deliver our clean energy future. I was blown away when I heard, first heard Natalie's story when I met her as a recipient of SBA's programs while I was celebrating Women's History Month last year in Detroit. And she launched Dunamis in 2012 as an energy efficiency firm helping businesses use green energy to lower costs. But she saw the future and imagined the possibilities. So just three years after founding the business, she pivoted and Dunamis began manufacturing LED lighting. And early last year, she announced they'd expand to produce electric vehicle charging stations as well. <laughs> And Natalie isn't just imagining the possibilities for herself. Uh, she is definitely, she chose to start her business uh, in her native Detroit. That's where she was born and raised. And because she wanted to give back and lift up her community. And she's doing just that. By the end of the year, uh, Dunamis estimates they will create 100 new jobs and expects to double that to create 200 new jobs by 2025. <laughs> And that's what happens when women lead. So everyone, welcome one of the entrepreneurial faces of the clean energy economy, Natalie King. Hello everyone, good afternoon. Administrator Guzman, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction and for having me as the second, at the second annual SBA Women's Business Summit. Again, my name is Natalie King, and I am the founder and CEO of Dunamis Clean Energy Partners and Dunamis Charge, which is an electric vehicle charging manufacturing company located right in the heart of the city of Detroit. And we are the first African-American woman-owned electric vehicle charger manufacturer in this world. <laughs> We currently employ over 135 workers, and we are on track to manufacture over 400,000 chargers by 2025, adding more than 150 good paying jobs, including charger technicians, material handlers, engineers, and much, much more. I started Dunamis in 2012, and because I believe that clean energy technology gives entrepreneurs a true opportunity to do good for our communities while being good at what we do. 
our success would not have been possible without the support that we received, really critical support that we received, especially during COVID from the U.S. Small Business Administration. And it made it possible for us to maintain our workforce during the pandemic. And as a result of President Biden's strong commitment to supporting small businesses and his investments in clean energy and manufacturing, we are growing, we are innovating, and we are optimistic about our future. The president often asks, where is it written that America can't lead the world in manufacturing? Well, as a native Detroiter hailing from the automotive capital of the world and the CEO of a manufacturing business, I can say confidently, Mr. President, it is not written anywhere. <laughs> At Dunamis Charge, we believe electric vehicles are for everyone. And I'm proud to say that this country has a president that holds the same belief and who fights for small businesses that look like mine. So with that, it is my great honor and privilege to introduce to you the President of the United States, Mr. <laughs> president Joe Biden. Thank you. My name is Joe Biden. <laughs> I'm Dr. Joe Biden's husband. <laughs> and I ate Jenny's ice cream, chocolate chip. I came down because I heard there was chocolate chip ice cream. By the way, I have a whole refrigerator full upstairs. <laughs> you think I'm kidding? I'm not. God. Ben, how are you, pal? One of the best guys in the United States Congress, Ben Cardin. <laughs> Folks, uh, welcome to the White House. It's a delight to have you all here. And who are those good-looking kids back there? <laughs> They're your kids, all four of them? Yeah. Well, stand up, guys. Well, I want you to know, like you, I had two brothers, three, three in our family, three brothers, and one sister. And my sister is smarter than all of us. <laughs> Not a joke. She, she used to be three years younger than me. Now she's 23 years younger than me. <laughs> yeah. She managed every one of my campaigns for office, even back when I was in high school. We went to the same university two years apart. She graduated with honors. I graduated. <laughs> and we had a simple rule in the family. Listen to Val. My sister Valerie is incredible. So guys, be nice to your sister. You're going to need her. You're going to need her. I promise. It's the same lineup. You're the oldest. Who's number two? Number two? Who's number three? You're twins? Are you guys twins? Okay. All right. This is this how it was in our outfit. Well, I'm so glad to see you all. Thanks for coming with mom, okay? You got to take care of your mom. Dads are much harder to raise, but, you know. <laughs> Before I begin to speak, the reason I spent a little time in the kids, I, I just want to speak very briefly about the school shooting in Nashville, Tennessee. <clears throat> you know, uh, Ben and I have been doing this our whole careers, it seems. And uh, it's just, uh, it's sick. You know, we're still gathering the facts of what happened and why. And we do know that as of now, there are a number of people who are not going to, did not make it, including children. And it's heartbreaking, uh, a family's worst nightmare. And I want to commend the police who responded incredibly swiftly, within minutes, to end the danger. We're monitoring the situation really closely, Ben, as you know. And uh, we have to do more to stop gun violence. It's ripping our communities apart, ripping the soul of this nation, ripping at the very soul of the nation. And we, we have to do more to protect our schools so they aren't turned into prisons. You know, uh, the shooter in this situation reportedly had two assault weapons and a pistol, two AK-47. So I call on Congress again to pass my assault weapons ban. It's about time that we 
began to make some more progress, but there's more to learn. But I just wanted to send my uh, concern and hearts out to so many parents out there. I've been to so many of these sites, as Ben knows, uh, by virtually every one. And uh, one of the things you folks should, I know you do know, but you should focus on. You know, just like when in the military, when my son was in Iraq for a year, other places, you, so many members of the military coming back with post-traumatic stress after witnessing the violence and participating in it. Well, these children, these teachers, you should be, should be focusing on their mental health as well. And so I'm grateful anyway. Sorry to start off that way, but I couldn't begin without acknowledging what happened. <clears throat> and now I'm grateful that all of you are joining us here today. Natalie, thank you for that introduction and for doing such an amazing thing in Detroit. Detroit, making change charges for electric vehicles in the Motor City. <laughs> Keeping going during the pandemic. And I wanted to welcome your son, Diop. Where's Diop? Oh, there you are, pal. How are you? You got to be proud of your mom. You got to be proud of your mom. And thanks to folks like Natalie and cities and towns all across America, we're seeing pride coming back. You know, there's nothing that just sort of saps the pride of a city or a town when they lose a business, lose uh, a significant employer. It just feels like you got your soul ripped out. But for so many people, you're bringing so many people back. You're bringing back business in all across America, not just in the East and the West Coast. So look, SBA Administrator Guzman, is, uh, I want to thank you for everything you've done and for your team, too, supporting small businesses across America. We're also joined, as I said, by Senator Cardin, the chair of the powerful Small Business Committee and literally, not figuratively, a true champion of businesses everywhere. And by the way, he's got more integrity in his little finger than most people have in their whole body. <laughs> and most of all, thank all of you, uh, small business owners and entrepreneurs who have joined us today. That includes three incredible panelists. Sarah started her business and out of her apartment with $5,000 in a startup capital. And now she built it just a little old billion dollar company. <laughs> oh. As my mother would say, God love you, dear. <laughs> Whoa. Guys, you're going to be okay. Uh, <laughs> Melissa began her business in a kitchen while working on Wall Street. Now it's the largest black owned makeup company sold in Target stores all across America. And Kyle combined her business training with her lifelong passion for dance and created an exercise platform that has been used in 2,500 cities around the world. And by the way, you were here a couple months ago performing with the dance company for Diwali celebration. You got it all, kid. You got it all. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's in the cards today about dancing. I'm not making any promises, but just, just know she can. And women, these women know what it takes to start a company out of nothing and build it into something that's consequential. You know, uh, and they know how many women out there have the talent, the skills, and the commitment to start successful businesses if they only had the opportunity. I used to have a friend who was a great basketball player, and his name was Pete McLaughlin. He used to say, you got to know how to know. you got to know how to know. And that's part of what the SBA is all about, when people know how to know. Today, it's all about lifting up women entrepreneurs and making sure they have the support they need to succeed. The businesses represented in this room stretch across industries from restaurants to architectural firms to hardware stores, plus Jenny's Splendid Ice Cream. <laughs> and by the way, by the way, it is splendid. It, it, you think I'm joking. If I were allowed to take you upstairs, you got a whole freezer full of Jenny's. <laughs> chocolate chip ice cream. You know, it's pretty dull when you've been in public life as long as I have, you know, for two things, chocolate chip ice cream and Ray-Ban sunglasses. But <laughs> what the hell, you know? Look, you're, you're entrepreneurs, you're innovators, you're job creators, and small businesses are the engine of our economy. 
The absolute engine are the glue and the heart and the soul of our communities. 12 million businesses across America are owned by women. 12 million. Small businesses like yours account for 40 percent. You account for 40 percent of the nation's GDP. You create two-thirds of all the new jobs, and you employ nearly half of all private sector workers. For an American economy is to be strong, it's going to have to have a strong, small business base. It has to be strong. We learned that again during the pandemic. When I came into office, this economy was reeling. Small businesses were hurting. Literally, hundreds of thousands of small businesses had closed across the country. Millions of Americans, many of whom worked in small businesses, lost their jobs through no fault of their own. To jumpstart American economic recovery, we needed to help the small businesses, and we needed to help them fast. So we got to work. I signed the American Rescue Plan. Since I took office, we've delivered more than $450 billion in emergency relief to 6 million small businesses to help you pay your bills, to pay your workers, to keep your doors open. We gave additional support to more than 100,000 restaurants, more than 13,000 live entertainment venues, which are, were especially hard hit. And we powered historic assistance to 220,000 child centers, child care centers, 90 percent of which are, are owned and staffed by women. By keeping those centers open, millions of women keep their job. Working parents could go to work again, knowing their children were being cared for. It's constant. They're all connected. All this is closely connected. Today, thanks to actions like these, we've achieved the fastest, strongest, most equitable recovery in American history. We've created 12.4 million new jobs. That's more jobs. That's more jobs in two years than any president has created in a four-year term. And a, and a majority, a majority of those jobs are held by women. Unemployment is near a 50-year low, and record number of people have applied to start new businesses. Nearly 10,500,000 applications in the past two years. You know, as all of you know, every time someone moves to start a new business, it's an act of hope. It's an act of hope. We're seeing a lot of these across the country, a lot of hope. And once again, it's women leading the way. In 2021, women started nearly half of all the new business in the United States, up from less than a third having been started by them in 2019. Women-owned businesses like yours add $1.8 trillion, $1.8 trillion to America's GDP every year, and that number grows. And now, now we'll keep that progress going. And you know that Small Business Administration runs a network of women's business centers across <laughs> You got to know how to know. You got to know how to know across all, <laughs> all 50 states, Washington, D.C., and Puerto Rico as well. These are places where women who want to start or grow a small business can get free business counseling apply for an F SBA loan, and compete for federal contracts. Today, I'm announcing that we're expanding the network of women's business centers to 160 centers nationwide, the largest number of all of American history. <laughs> Plus, through the American Rescue Plan, we're investing $10 billion to make capital available to small businesses. $10 billion is going to programs run by states and U.S. territories and tribal governments, which then match are matched with public and private dollars, leveraging tens of billions more for small business. It's about leverage. This is vital because we, we know, we know that plenty of companies with potential don't get off the ground or can't grow because they can't get the startup funds or venture capital. This can be a major barrier for women entrepreneurs. Last year, startups with all women teams received less than 2 percent, less than 2 percent of all the venture capital dollars. My administration, and in particular Vice President Harris, are working hard to change those numbers so more Americans with great ideas and strong plans can get the boost they need to launch successful businesses. Because, by the way, it helps everybody. It helps everybody. And then as we implement major 
pieces of legislation that I signed in law during the past two years, we're ensuring that women are fully at the table. And I mean that sincerely. From the historic bipartisan infrastructure law, rebuilding roads, bridges, water systems, high-speed internet, all across America, we're investing in over a trillion, two hundred billion dollars. If we're going to be the leading country in the world economically, we have to have a leading infrastructure in the world. And we rank at the, near the bottom of the major companies now. Countries, I should say. And the Chips and Science Act. I had trouble convincing people of this, but investing hundreds of billions of dollars, $300 billion, to restore America's technological edge by including by manufacturing semiconductor chips. By the way, we invented those chips. <laughs> oh, we did. We, the United States of America. And then we got fat and happy. And it seemed like a lot of major corporations thought it's better to export jobs to get cheaper jobs and import product. Not anymore. Yes. By the way, for the first time, firms receiving significant federal dollars will have to make sure the high quality child care is available to their workers. So parents can keep their jobs and keep good jobs. <clears throat> you know, by the way, those so-called fabs that are, where they build these computer chips, <clears throat> you know what the average salary is going to be in the fab? $130,000. And you don't, need a, you don't need a college education. <clears throat> the Inflation Reduction Act, our country's biggest investment of climate ever, anywhere. Across all these laws, we're making them sure that women have access to new jobs and new contracting opportunities in sectors where they've been historically underrepresented, from manufacturing to construction to clean energy. And by the way, I'm now I'm supposed to I'm I'm known as America's most pro-labor senator. Well, guess what? And then as now as president, well, guess what? They're in fact increasing the number of women are in labor unions. It's got to be. Oh no, you think I'm kidding? I'm not kidding. Women are more than 50 percent of the population, to state the obvious. We want to have the strongest economy in the world. We can't leave half the workforce behind. It's that simple. And when we make major investments like these, small businesses are going to benefit as well. Last year, I went up to Syracuse, New York, where I went to school. Micron Technology, a big semiconductor chip manufacturing, is investing $100 billion to build a huge manufacturing facility, so-called MAGAFAB. Well, guess what? It's going to create 9,000 good-paying jobs. I met a woman there named Shawnee Davis. She studied at Syracuse University. Her dad introduced her to electrical work. He was an electrician. She joined the IBW, International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, completed her apprenticeship, was the first black woman in the city to become a master electrician. Now she owns her own electrical business. <laughs> and with Micron, <clears throat> And Micron making this huge investment in central New York, thanks to the law we passed and pushed, that means more opportunity for her company and her workers. And here's what she said. She said, I'm a small business now, but I'm not planning to stay a small business. <laughs> well, all of you in this room know that kind of determination. That entrepreneurial drive is the heart of America's spirit. And we have to be unleashing it by helping more women entrepreneurs launch their businesses and achieve their dreams. Let me close with this. During Women's History Month, we recognize the history of women entrepreneurs in America. And it stretches back centuries. But it was only 35 years ago, in 1988, that the Women's, that the women's Business Ownership Act was signed into law. Before then, in many states, if a woman applied for a business loan, she needed her husband, her father, or her brother to co-sign for her. I'm not joking. When I passed the Violence Against Women Act, I eliminated that. You used to have to get, to get a bank account, too. Can you imagine? Well, thanks to all of you, we're making up for lost time. <laughs> and for the women, for all the women who, through decades, have dreamed of having their own business, making their own money, carving out the slice of independence, but couldn't because the laws wouldn't let them or they didn't have the money or family support, that's why what you're doing today, along with women across the country, is so important. You're helping America be a company where everyone, everyone can participate, where everyone's contribution is valued, and where everyone has the freedom to pursue the dreams and build the future that they dream of. 
That's been the promise of our nation from the start. And you're making it real for this generation and future generations. Because of you, we're going to continue our progress in the years ahead. You may have heard me say it before, but I can honestly say it without fear of contradiction. I've never been more optimistic. I mean this when I've been doing this. I know I don't look it, but I've been doing this a long time. <laughs> I didn't want you to help me out here. But anyway. But I've been doing this a long time. But I've never been more optimistic about America's future than I am today. I mean it's United States of America. There's nothing, nothing, nothing beyond our capacity when we set our mind to it. Nothing. So behind I mean it. I mean it. That's when I asked me if I could only do one thing, what would I do? I said I'd cure cancer. I said, why is that? It's not just because cancer affects so many people. It's a big thing. And Americans began to wonder whether they could do big things anymore. Well, guess what? We're going to cure cancer. We're going to cure cancer in the next 25 years. We've just invested $5 billion more than I used to do it. So look, on behalf of a grateful nation, I want to thank you all, because you're such an inspiration to so many men and women around the country. You really are. You truly are. And God bless you all. And may God protect our troops. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, I'm okay, I've got to go. But I hope you have a good conference here, and I hope you have a good round table. And uh, there's a little thing going on in, around the world. Please remain seated. The program will resume shortly with our panel. Thank you.